Hi, Carol here. Wonderful warm welcome to my craft room this morning. And this is going to be on page four, I think, this one fold out that I'm working on. I wanted to add another flip or flop or flap, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> onto this. Don't ask me why, I just felt like I wanted to have something on there. So I grabbed a sheet of paper and it is approximately four, uh, let's see. Uh, when I did fold it, it was eight inches long. I scored it on the half inch. Uh, so the half inch is going to have glue on it and go down onto my page there to the left. And then I made, that's the flap right there. So you have a half an inch, then four inches. And then I thought, you know what, I'm going to add something else onto the side. So I had the piece that I cut off. So I ended up cutting this out. And it's the exact same size. I'm going to, you can see, I'm going to cut this the same size as the uh, piece I put on. But I'm going to do something unusual, and that is to fold it on an angle. So I'll only score this piece a quarter of an inch with a quarter inch score mark. You can see right there. Uh, when I put it up to there, uh, yeah, cut it off and then do a quarter of an inch. I'm just waiting until I cut that off so I can figure out what I decided to do in the long run. And uh, I think what I decided to do here is forget this piece, actually. <laughs> yeah, isn't this what I always do? Uh, I ended up scoring it, but then I think I put another longer piece on because to me this seemed awkward just to have that one piece. So let's see what I do here. It's been a while. Yes, I have been working on trying to get it completed this week for you and we're almost there. I think the next tutorial should just about cover it. So here we go. I'm putting some glue down on the side and we're going to place this up against the page four that flips up. Remember page four flips up, that flips out, and it flips down. So here we go. I'm going to try to just measure it so it's uh, somewhat uh, in the middle. I think it's more to the top than it is to the bottom. I don't think it's directly in the middle, but it doesn't matter because it's just a flip out to the side. Now, then I grabbed this longer sheet and I thought, hmm, let me work with this. So I put a tick mark there to cut it off the same size, which I think is four inches long. And whatever, you know, it doesn't matter if you're making an album, what size. I just thought this was kind of unique. I put it on there to score it about a quarter of an inch, I'm pretty sure. Quarter of an inch, yes. I'm going to add that to this side. And when I cut it off, I'll show you. I don't cut it off till after I do my little um, fold. So bear with me. I really should have have not put that part at the beginning in, but I want you know that I change up on everything I do. So here I put that on and I did the fold. I bring it out. I've got this long piece. So what I thought I would do is I would just fold it here, make a crease, a diagonal crease from the top and so it matched the top and the bottom on that fold and score it. This way I can cut it off after the fact. So this is what I did and this will make a diagonal half pocket. Only it's going to be a diagonal pocket. Then you're going to move it over and you're going to cut it. So you're not only going to have a pocket when you open it. Okay now I had leftover paper so I folded it up. Watch this. This is an unusual pocket. Um, you fold it up and then you want to score it. Once I get it in frame there I'll show you. Let's see what I'm going to do first. I have to make sure that I get it so that it folds over. It's not in the crease, anywhere near the gusset. So I thought, don't use scissors, Carol. You can never cut anything straight for some reason. So let's see if I can slide it into my cutter and start doing some cutting here. So there's where the little tick was as far as closing it right there. Now I have this little piece. And you know what I was thinking here? I was thinking of the bride's earrings, having a place to put her earrings as a keepsake. And I'll show you what I did. It's the funniest thing ever. 
uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm not even going to tell you because it's, it's so hysterical. I end up, uh, yeah, let's not go there right now. <laughs> I'll save it as a surprise, okay? But the thought was great. The thought was great. It really was. I have this issue using my, um, what is it, the crocodile? You, you know, when you used uh, those little round, they're not brads, but they're uh, fill in the blank for me here this morning. Boy, it's quite early and I'm not sure, but let's keep going on here. It'll, it'll come to me. I always say that because it does. All right, so I folded it back over and I was thinking I'm going to put two holes in this and the earrings can go in it if they're pierced earrings. Uh, if they're not, then you could put it in the pocket I'm making right here. So either way, it would uh, end up, you know, using up the real estate for earrings. So here we go. I'm just taking my bone folder and creasing it down and thinking, okie dokie, let's go with this. Right there. That's what you're doing, Carrie. You need a magnet and you need some paper. Remember I had these left over for page four? So I thought, well, you know what? I don't want to use up all of this. I want to end up putting some acetate on there sometimes. So then I thought, no, you know what? I'll punch flowers in it. But this is hysterical here. This punch, there I am. How do you do, little Carol? Uh, here, this punch punches your flower right out. <laughs> I can't even stand looking at it. It punched it. I'm going, wait a minute. Okay, <laughs> what's happening here? I'm losing my real estate on the paper and I'm going to lose a flower too because it's going to pop out. <laughs> but I thought, Carol, just go with it. Just go with it. Don't worry. Uh, what? <laughs> you can almost, you can almost sense my, my despair, can't you? It's just like, oh, great. Now what? <laughs> I have. I have a flower. Good job, Carol. Put that over to the side and we'll see what we can work with now. All right. You know, can't you just sense yourself being in your own craft room and this happening? I'm sure it just doesn't happen to me, you know, that these things happen. <laughs> I'm going, uh, excuse me, could you go back on that paper? Because I haven't got a clue what I'm going to do now. You just wrecked my whole creation by popping out of that punch. What's the matter with you, Martha Stewart? You, you've got to give uh, instructions that you can press a button and then they say something to you. Okay, so here's where the acetate came in. i got to get my length on there somehow. I, I don't want that little piece. So I'm going to add acetate to the bottom of the inside of the flap. So I have the outside little half inch and then I have the rest of it has acetate. So let's do the magnet thing. Now I'm going to tell you something. Let's just, I'm not ashamed of this. Really I'm not. I couldn't get the, the magnet thing when I was creating this. I really couldn't. I had magnets. I tell you what, I was taking magnets on and taking them off. Instead of taking two minutes to just look at a video on working these magnets, you know, I remember that you put a magnet on top, maybe a little bit of liquid, then the liquid wouldn't go over there, and then, um, oh yeah, I'm just showing you that you're going to have a page down in there, and then I'm going, okay, let's cover the magnets. Yeah, I think that's a good thing, cover the magnets, but the magnets weren't, excuse me, strong enough uh, to hold that flap. I used a 10 millimeter by 1 millimeter. You know, I have a link on my last tutorial on my blog. You see all the sales for buying wonderful magnets. So I thought, okay, I've got to cover these magnets up. So let's use this pink paper just for the top. And then I was going to put the, um, oh, I keep thinking Brad's, but it's the, uh, I'm going to have to get up out of my chair and go and look because I can't wait to find out what they are. I'm thinking grommets, but it's not grommets. It's the, uh, just a second. Thank you for your patience. It's the eyelets, of course. I walked over to my uh, bookcase over there where I had put them. So the eyelets. Now, I haven't used my crocodile 
in some time. And uh, eyelets, between the eyelets and these magnets, something about the word eyelets, magnets, it, it just wasn't working. Here's the little uh, uh, O-rings, I call them. That, so you don't have to use two magnets, just get a little uh, washer or O-ring, whatever you call them, and put them on there. But it's like, oh, I, <laughs> I don't know what was happening. So then I thought, okay, put it over top. Then I just had it all messed up. My mind was going crazy. I just thought, Carol, pretty soon I'm not going to have a magnet on there. I'm going to have a great big four-inch ribbon and tie it together and call it a flap and a closure. But look at me. Who struggles with a magnet like this? You know, I have 4,000 of them. I don't know what I was doing there. So I thought, all right, let's just start again. Okay, I got to cover this, the magnet page. I have the two uh, washers showing because I have two magnets, one under the pink thing and one at the top. I think I got it down after this, but I thought, okay, let's cover that up because really, sometimes you wonder, does this woman really create? <laughs> How can I have this many problems, you're asking yourself? Well, I ask myself that too. I have no idea. I just keep going, you know. Um, yeah, I, I've watched at least uh, 20 videos on putting down magnets, but my brain just didn't <laughs> magnetize to it. And uh, yeah, I've got it down now though. It only took me like a whole album to get it down. And now I don't struggle with it because you know what? You always like what you know. And now I finally figured it out. So here we go. I did have to use the scissors because I cut it too far over on the fold. Yes, I don't know why I keep it real folks. I just figure somehow it's got to give you hope, if nothing else, that you will get through a project if you mess it up. Anybody can edit out everything. You know, I can. I could edit it all out and have a two-minute tutorial. <laughs> and some people are saying, well, why don't you? <laughs> because I torture myself, so I'm figuring I might as well torture someone else do. I am going through all this. Anyway, let's get on the let's get on with it, right? So here I have to cover it with a sheet of the paper I have out of the 12 by 12 pack. It's really nice paper, but it's very, very uh plain, you know. That's the only thing. That's why I was glad that I had the pink to run off of, you know. So here I'm scoring it to make just a little uh eighth of an inch score mark more. On the turn here you do have to have a fair size gusset if you have an extra thick flap which is on the outside there where I did the angle so you know that's two to three sheets of paper going on there so I covered it and I'm going to place this on top get it over with just glue this down and be happy you have your magnets going on see it flicks Oh yeah, I'm feeling, okay, there's magnets in there, right? <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, so here I'm going. I, I can really, let me stop and say, I can empathize with people that do videos and they don't like to measure. I don't like to measure either, but can you imagine a project if you never measured anything? <laughs> Talk about fixing stuff up. Boy, you would have a fun time doing that, wouldn't you? So here we go. And I don't know if I, yeah, I had to cut some of this off because I had uh, just the quarter inch um, gusset on that side. But you know, it is fun. It really is. I know it looks so aggravating to think, oh, good night, Carol. Why didn't you think to do that? But you don't. As you're creating, you have so many things on your mind. I do on, you know, the next page, what's going to happen, is that magnet going to stick to my washer, you know, these important things in life when you're creating, and uh, yeah, so here, get, I don't know, do I put this down? I can't even remember. Yesterday, I had nothing but computer problems again, nothing but computer problems. I was thinking of actually putting stock into Apple because I'd make a fortune just on my calls alone. <laughs> 
I don't know what that has to do with stocks, but it sounded good, didn't it? Yeah, I spent the day mostly yesterday. Nothing would work. Nothing would upload. Uh, nothing went right. I'm telling you. It was one thing after another. So I thought, you know what? I have to give it a few, at least a day before I start to do the voiceover just from that. But um, we didn't get it all worked out. We got enough worked out so I could get this tutorial up and then I'm going to work on the other issue of um, one video I could not get to upload. No matter if we copied it, whatever. So let's move on. So here I decided, okay, you know that roll here I got at the dollar store where nothing's a dollar? I thought I would use it as a pocket because it's so pretty and it really does work with um, things like this. It's kind of uh, plastic too. I'm just warming it up so that'll dry faster. I want to put something in there. And then I took my organza. This is plain organza. It will work like Tyvek. Organza works very well for holding um, anything with the crease together. It's not going to split. So I put the organza ribbon right over top of the crease that I scored there to the left and glued it down. And now I'm putting some of this roll. This roll, I think, will last me for, for a long time, I think. Uh, but doesn't it make a beautiful pocket? I mean, you've got about, I don't know, five inches of depth, you know, five inches deep, not deep. I have five inches across. How's that? It's early. I'm tired. And this is what happens. But I couldn't wait. I'm making a po something to go inside of it. Yes, a little wee um, pocket thing. Yes, that's what we're going to call it right there. And then I thought, oh, those flowers will fit on the inside of this. There, look at that. Look, it was made for that. My wandering flower that I cut out. And it goes perfectly, doesn't it? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I don't know what I, why I brought that punch back. Maybe I was saying, thank you. Thank you, Martha Stewart. It worked out perfectly. And uh, yeah, some of those punches, if you look at it, you don't know if it all punches out. Half of it punches out, you know. Uh, I have one that has butterflies and just the wings pop, uh, punch out around the wings. And the body stays in the paper. How cool is that? So here we go. I'm adding some glue to put down my organza ribbon. And this is just like Tyvek. It dries clear. And you won't have to worry about that flap closing and opening if you forgot to put Tyvek in there. You can use anything other than Tyvek. I mean, you could use, um, let me see. Well, there's that many things. <laughs> I'm thinking of linen. I'm looking over at my linen closet. Linen, you know, meshed linen, you know, the mesh stuff, you could use that. Anything that will glue down is fine. And even material, anything, you know, you don't have to run out and get Tyvek. If you have organza ribbon or you have, uh, anything with the mesh, even um, tape, you know, black, that really, that uh, wallpaper black tape there, um, the Gorilla Tape, or I don't know, anything like that. So let's move forward. So here I have a tag, and the picture can go on the back, or you can write with a white pen a little something about why your earrings are on the bottom of this. Yes, I love it. So here we go. I decided to use double-sided tape and use it up because I bought a bunch of rolls of it. And uh, yeah, it worked perfectly. I love it. And if you're going to put glue over top, it's going to stay. I think it would stay just with this and paper. It's pretty sticky. So now I have to get a sheet of uh, matching, kind of matching, out of the same paper pack. It, it all goes together. It really does. Then I just put it down and then I'm going to cut it with my, I think I'm going to use that uh, fabric roller cutter thing that I bought a few weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, I'm deciding, no, 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 you better put something down there. I could see maybe it possibly could lift and I didn't want it to lift. So let's glue her down. And uh, you can see that I'm working with hardly any space on an entire island. I mean... You know, I also added two more lamps. Why not? 
you know, fill up the spaces so that I absolutely have no room to work. I, that must be my goal, right? Yeah, I have an, a lamp that I'm going to... Actually, I bought this beautiful set of lamps. Let me jump in there. And they have floating flowers. Wait till you see it. It's absolutely stunning. I'm going to refurbish them. Yes. And I uh, got them, I don't know, 10 years ago at a thrift store. They're antique. They have the antique glass on the bottom. You're going to love them. I'll show you on the next video. They're gorgeous. But I thought, you know what, for now I do need extra light because one of my odd lights blew. Okay, so I took a, let's get here, a one inch or a half inch punch, whatever you want to do. And I punched a little hole on the side, opened it up so you could see. I'm going to have... Um, I, I get so busy yakking, especially on a Saturday morning when I haven't had, you know, all week. Uh, the two friends that I do yak with that we FaceTime have been busy. One is living in the area where the hurricane went through, so I didn't want to bother her. And then my other friend went to Alaska. Hey, Tina, are you back? And <laughs> she went on a cruise with her husband to Alaska. So I've been just aloneing it, you know. Uh, just me in my craft room and uh, yeah so now you get the worst of it because now I'm yakking today with you I saved it all up for this video so here we go I wanted to make it um, so it oh there I love this thing I love this cutter I yes I just had to turn it around the right, right way I think uh, it just cut perfectly it really did like I don't know why I'm looking at it that's my new ruler with all those measurements on it that only cost me $2.98 at my uh, station. Oh, no, that one was $8.99 because it's the metal one. It's the blue and black one that cost me $2.98 in the clearance bin. So here we go. Always remember to close your circular cutter thingy, fabric Fiskars cutter thingy. And um, yeah, so look at that. It looked naked. There was something about this that did not appeal to me. And I thought, okay, Carol, you got you have to do something uh, with this. So why not silver? You know, add silver. Yes. I, and I'm feeling, do, do I have a magnet in there? Do I have a washer in there? Why is this not sticking? Yeah. And then I'm thinking, oh, no, it's underneath the acetate. I can't get at it to put a bigger one in there. Because remember, that paper is three papers thick because I have the tag inside there. And yeah, I'm just going, okay, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I don't know. Should I leave this in the edit so people think I really don't know what I'm doing? I don't. You know, I'm just, uh, yeah. So I guess a few birds stop by to remind me, okay, pigeon head, what if, what if you do this? What if you do this? Okay. Start cutting something else while you're thinking about how you're going to remedy that problem. And uh, I did. I took this out because I saw the little corner of it was up and I didn't glue it down with hot glue. So I thought, okay, I'll do that. Then I got to go back. You know, you still have to go back. But I'm thinking, oh, I have to do something with these pages. They look a tad blank. And who's going to, you know, where are you going to put a picture in this? And then, ding, ding, ding. My flowers came to my mind, yes, and I just put glue on the corner so that you could slide a picture underneath there and slide a picture down there, and I remedied that problem. Oh yes, see? Yes, the picture can go in there. The magnets work fantastic on this side. I didn't have any problems but with that one piece that I put as an addition. That's the only problem. But I did remedy it. Yes. So you'll see what I do at the end. It did end up sticking. So now I have these pre-cut Heartfelt Creation um, dies that I had. So I just put some glue on the bottom and a little ways up. I added it to this pocket. So you had a pocket, obviously, that, that square uh, shaker goes into but then you also have a slide in for another photo uh, underneath there and then I put another one right here it just looked yummy it did it looked romantic it just I know yummy and romantic aren't really in uh, line 
with each other. You know, when you say yummy, I think of a Sunday. And if I think romantic, uh, yeah, let's just leave it there, okay? So, <laughs> here we go. Yeah, romantic. Oh, yes, I think of a cruise. No, I don't. I don't want to go on any cruises. I don't want to be in the ocean at all. Yes, the Titanic really damaged me as far as that. I never want to go on a ship in the ocean. No. So, here we go. I just added that in. I'm going to add acetate to the back of this frame and this is how I'm going to hide my, um, I don't know if I hide the washer or I'm hiding an actual magnet. We'll see as we go along. But I'm hiding one of them. The glue seeped out there so I'm just taking my pokey tool. Then I'll cut along the bottom. I'm getting some nice cutting time in and I know this tutorial is everlasting, but you know what? I practically finished up the album on this tutorial, so I thought, why make it two, you know? Why make it part uh, 60 and 61? <laughs> yeah, oh, I had a little boo-boo there. Yes, my red nail polish got on there. I don't know how, but add a flower to it. Now you have a tuck spot underneath the acetate and a tuck spot underneath the flower. Yes, you could write a little something, tuck it under the flower, and then put the picture underneath the frame. Isn't that lovely? Everything works out for us, doesn't it? So let's move forward and glue this down, and that is taken care of. We have a little spot that will enable us to cover the magnet right there, because I had to add another magnet. So the flower worked out perfectly, you know, the nail polish thing worked out to cover that and uh, yeah. So here I'm just, I'm sliding the glue over that seeped from the flower. I, I wanna be able to put something directly over. So while it's drying, um, it worked out like that. Now we have to cover the front, okay? So the fold mark on here. So I took some glue and we're going to cover it with this. And I have it right in front of me. And what does it say, Carol? It says, it says the story of you and me. Isn't that pretty? Everything comes together on this uh, album. I think you're really going to like it at the end. I was very pleased with it. I wanted to do an album that was different than any other album I have seen on YouTube. They're all gloriously wonderful, beautiful, beautiful albums and very talented creators of them. But uh, you know, you have to put your own mark on your own work. And that's what I try to do. I don't try to copy anybody, although I do get the inspiration here. I'm putting the corners on there. I cut the little Batman wings off and slid them in the corner so you could tuck a photo on. Now I'll add the acetate underneath the little uh, tuck marks there, see that? Underneath the corners, the picture corn tabs, I'll call them. Then I have the acetate so that the uh, person that gets this album just has to take off the acetate, put the picture in, and then put the acetate back under the photo corners. There they are, see? It always comes out of my brain. It just takes a little bit of time, that's all. Photo corners, that's what I was thinking of. And then we're going to move forward on the rest of it. It's so funny. I had to cut so many of these too. It was like, wow. I just took a little rounded edge. I made a little rounded edge. Took the corners off. You know, the direct points. And really, you shouldn't have because it would help it get it inside the, uh, the photo corners. But anyway, that's what I did. And I'm trying to slide it under there and get the exact size. That's the key. You have to measure, you know, all of them aren't exactly alike. Each corner, you know, picture corner is not the same size. That's what I found as I was doing this, you know, cutting out 400 sheets of acetate to make it fit. But finally it worked and there it is. Yes, and I have a lot of uh, acetate over in my um, reserves as uh, my friend Shelly Geigel would say and uh, here we go so this is the, where I put this flap right here did it need another flap I'm just making sure that this acetate goes there's no glue so I thought well acetate's a little thicker than the paper I'll slide it over and make sure all the goobies are to the left 
and you're able to slide a nice little photo in there and it worked. Isn't that pretty? I really like it. I really do. Even though there's a lot going on on just one page here that you put in the album. Um, okay, here's the story of my... Um, just a minute. What's the name of these things? My eyelets. Yes, my eyelets. So I thought, oh, I better take a practice run, okay? A practice run. Woohoo! I cut the holes and they were the size. I guessed at those little things you have to turn, the squares. You have to have them uh, identical so it doesn't smush them down to nothing on one side and look terrible. Oh, I had it down. It looked so pretty. I thought, I can't believe it. I actually have the metal things there in the right spot. And uh, so I went to do it. I took a little bit of my Coca-Cola. I didn't think to use the measuring guide. They have a slider measuring guide. I did it by eye. Look at that. That is, they didn't name it eyelet because you're supposed to use your eye. They, you're supposed to use the slider measuring things. Look at, I have one eye up and one eye down. Yes, the right eye's down. I'm going, well, isn't this great? Just rip it off. Just rip it off. I love doing this. Yes. It's a it's a real stress reliever. Just don't even sit there thinking, do I put something over it? No. Take it off. And that's what I did. Oh, that was a good one, wasn't it? Uh, the only thing that could have been worse is I would have spilled my, my Coca-Cola over this page and then I would have really had to take a nap. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd have to hide out for a few days. <laughs> what did I tell you? Yeah, so here we're starting over. I mean, who is going to know? Only the person watching this tutorial is going to know. The bride's not going to know unless she watches it. And then she's going to wonder, wow, all of that is under all this paper? That's amazing. She'll appreciate the album even more. So I cut another piece. Yes, we have to put another piece over that mass, of course. And uh, forget about the eyelets. I was not taking a chance of cutting this. So I took it off. I grabbed my Zyron. Love my Zyron. I ended up using it quite a bit through this album, by the way. And I'll show you that as time rolls on. You know, if you're going to stay with me on this tutorial, you can do me in little sections. I don't mind. You know, I understand not everybody can sit for two and a half hours and watch a video. That's crazy. But I do have a lot going on in this. And that was crooked. But I do remedy that as well. Do I put another sheet on here? Of course I do. Yeah, because you can't have a little, um, have it crooked there. And that's because I cut it. Um, I'll have, you know what, I'll have, as I'm watching this, I'm going to have enough paper on top of this. I don't need a magnet. It's going to be so heavy, that thing's just going to shut on its own. <laughs> yeah. If you don't have magnets, that's a possibility. Just add so many layers of paper, the thing just shuts. That's all you have to do. So here we go. Um, I am going to put some glue on this, and then the glue's going to ooze out. You need one for the front and one for the back, by the way, just so you know. And, uh, oh, I guess I didn't cover that one. I just cut it. That was for the back. Excuse me. And always remember, if you're doing the back, to, to reverse the, when you're punching it out, to reverse it on the paper so that the good side is on the opposite side of the paper, if that makes sense. Now I cut out some more of the matching little pearls and I cut them into, you know, individual pearls. And I'm going to put them in the holes because the liquid glue seeped through there anyway. Let me just show you. I have my pick stick, which I put more orthodontic wax on it. That orthodontic wax picks it up much easier than leaving it as a pick stick. Just a little round ball of that orthodontic wax on top of the ball of the actual pick stick at the end of a paintbrush, on the end of a pencil. I don't care what you put it at the end of your pokey tool, uh, the, the end of a pin, whatever. You have yourself a wonderful pickup stick with orthodontic wax. Yes. So here we go. I did this and added it, and I loved it because it matched the inside. Then hopefully I pull the camera back. 
so that uh, you can see. Now here was the issue, okay? I'm going, okay, what's with this magnet thing? I have to add another sheet of paper because it just looked too blank. And I'm thinking, I have to add another magnet. I have to. I don't know where I'm going to add it, but I guess I'll put a sheet of paper down over top of wherever I add it and you won't see it. Wait till you see this error. This is crazy. I should do a tutorial on just, um, sorry about that, uh, on just the making mistakes and how to cover them. That's what I should call it. Uh, fixing every mistake. But anyway, here we go. I grabbed another washer. And now I want to use this tape up that uh, got burnt. Don't ask me how it got burnt. Oh, here I put the magnet on the opposite side of the um, tape. I remembered that this you're supposed to do that, but I'm telling you, I don't know what was going on. So I covered it. Yes, okay, there, I covered it. That worked. And then I took that off because I'm thinking, okay, I got to come up with a plan here for, uh, what's this? Oh, instead of a washer, I guess I went to get uh, an actual magnet. And please go over to my blog and check out the sales. I left you direct links. You just have to press them. It takes you right over there. This is a 12 millimeter by one millimeter. That's why. And I'm going, okay, let's do another one because I don't know. The washer wasn't catching it on, underneath that paper for some reason. And I wasn't ripping that great big sheet off to add another sheet. So I thought, okay, add the washer and then just put a tuck spot. Put it low enough. Uh, that it's covered and there you go I did that this is the most hysterical page I have ever worked on now I'm putting 16th of an inch double-sided tape on here because I want it to be a tuck spot for a tag or for a picture on the tag in here so here we go um, I'm putting that and then a little bit of glue of course and then I'm gonna put it down and there you have it. I left the tape lid on because you don't want any sticky going down inside there. I think I did. Uh, I'm going so fast I don't know. And then I decided to use this dreamy white paper. Remember that one I got at Michael's? Uh, after the fact, I love this. It has gold flecks so fine inside it. It's gorgeous. So I put that underneath and I thought, okay, this is working. All right. You know, I can do all kinds of things. Let's see if it magnetizes, because if it doesn't, I don't know what I'm going to do. Just taking this little piece of icky off. Then, um, what am I doing with this now? Oh, it's going at the top. Yes. I add, oh, it's stuck. Look at that. Look at that. I have two tuck spots. I wish I would move my camcorder uh, so that I wasn't so, in, you know, zoomed in. My, I, ho I have to keep looking up. I get, you know, you get enthralled with what you're doing and you forget to look up into the uh, camera window. So here we go. I got to add something to this. It's going to be the little, uh, I had to take it off, obviously, and do it again. And there you have it. Another little tag. Just simple like that. I made a ton of them. I can't wait to show you all the pretty tags that I made. I just sat and made tags and window tags and picture tags. and Yeah, I'm really excited. And then I'm thinking, Carol, you have to cover that magnet. You have acetate on there, and now you got to cover it. What were you thinking? So I thought while well, I was thinking, I don't know what I was thinking. I never know what I'm thinking. And so I put that in the corner, my little corner picture things I put them in there because it'll match and it just takes the eye off of any imperfection it draws it to the edges here to the corners my little corner picture corners and uh, I was happy with that that was fine but I'm still looking at that not only do I have to cover that magnet on the front Carol you have to cover it underneath so guess what that causes bulk B U L K bulk. Oh yes. So let's go with some acetate. Why not? You know, whatever gets no, get that off there, Carol. That was more into the to the grape color. Um, 
So I put this acetate underneath there. I thought that was kind of nice because I am going to lose the effect of the acetate on the top flap. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to put it on the bottom. Are you with me still? Oh yes. You got to love it, right? Now, wait till you see what happens here. I needed to put another magnet. Can you believe it? This one section was not sticking. I don't know. I think looking at it now, like looking back at the actual uh, creation of this, is the flap here had too many layers. And if you just have one layer, like paper to paper, your magnets will stick like crazy. If you have two papers to one paper, it'll stick like crazy. But because I had so much going on on here, I didn't. So I thought, okay, let's just struggle with this magnet thing. And believe you me, I have it down now. I understand the concept. But I haven't done an album like this using uh, magnets uh, before, I, I'd say, over three years ago when I did my last album. And it wasn't as, um, I don't know, like over the top as it is today. They have so many of these flips and flops and dips and all these things that I've never seen before that I'm trying to incorporate into this wedding album. So I just left it in. If you're struggling, this may help you, you know, and that's what I want to even inspire you to not get upset when things don't go the way you anticipate. There's always plan B always a plan B and and there's a plan C D E F too <laughs> so no worries no worries let's just carry on so I got this on there and then I thought okay this magnet is sitting up on top of the other magnet and I thought okay maybe because there's glue on there I'm feeling around for that other magnet and I'm telling you I don't know if there was even one under there I started second guessing myself like did I put one under there I don't know, you know? Uh, so I thought, Carol, you've got to do something. So I took my O-ring or washer, and um, it's like potato, patata. I call it an O-ring because I see that little O missing out of the center. So then I take this off. Look at this. I take it off, and I put it back on, of course. I had to lower it, actually. That's what I was doing there. And to hit whatever was under there. This was the craziest page. So guess what I have to do? Oh yes, I have to do something. So I had to, first of all, I went to decoration. I decorated the magnet that was on the top, you know, the top part there. So I put a flower, I put some deep, deep green leaves, you know those fabric leaves? Then I put uh, some of my gesso over top, as you can see right there, and toned it down. And I liked it. I added I liked adding a little bit of greenery. Then I had this little bit of paper in my reserves. I like that. It's in my pile to the left. <laughs> yeah, no sophistication here. It's in the pile to my left. But I do separate the colors and put a little uh, clip on them. I don't just, you know, throw them in a bag and hope for the best. I have them a little bit situated, a little bit organized. I'm just kind of like that little bit of organized gal. Not a not a OCD kind. So here, uh, let's get back to this. I needed to stick something behind it, and I thought that this die was perfect. You know, it was left over, it's fancy. Um, I'm going to take my scissors, so this is going to make me happy. I get to cut something crooked. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> see what I'm saying? As I'm watching myself here, I'm going, wow, I can't believe anybody watches your tutorials, Carol. <laughs> but that's great because the mouse and the slider bar, you can go from the beginning and skip the whole center of craziness and go right to the end. That's okay with me. I get it. So anywho, let's get moving along. I've got my nice flower. I've got my fancy paper. I have to cut something again so it looks even. And now I am going to put this honking. Uh, I'm going to shut this. It, it's life or death. I'm, I'm going to do that. Uh, because there is a... Yep. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. If I hurt your ears. I'm sorry. But 
let's go to you and me. It's just you and me. <laughs> I'm going to cover this magnet because I have to put a heavier magnet on there. I have too many layers of paper. I can't help it. And I don't think there was a washer underneath that big sheet of paper. There's no way there was. No way there was. So I can't go there because you can see I have that crease going across the pink. So I have to either get a bigger sheet of paper to cover it. Isn't that uh, heartfelt creation black dye gorgeous? I just tucked it down in there. So I have to cover this section anyway. So I put my magnet there. And then I thought, okay, where is this going to land? Let's just see, where is this going to land? Well, it's going to land nowhere if you keep it like that, Carol. Absolutely not. Oh, this magnet thing. Until I understood the concept of how you do it, it drove me crazy. So look at I went, I'm sure I went to plan D, and that is uh, don't worry about it. Yeah, don't give it any worries. Just get a bigger piece of paper, cut it off. That's what I'm doing to my left, just to make it at least look a little, yeah, that was it. I like that. I like the rounded curve on it. I'm just going to cover this up and so it's six inches thick. Who knows? Nobody knows why it's six inches thick. You put some uh, pictures in there and look at that. Oh, I was so happy. That thing just went and stuck to it immediately. I loved it. And now I'm going to take all of the double-sided tape off and we're going to have another pocket. Now you're saying to yourself, Carol, how do you have a pocket with that? Well, you know what? It goes into the first pocket underneath. <laughs> that slides into the, the other pocket. It, it's an imaginary top pocket. It goes into the first pocket I put down there, okay? Look at that washer. Look at all this stuff. I mean, I don't need a magnet. With all of these washers on here, this thing is just closing. <laughs> it has nothing to do with the magnets, right? Oh, look at that. And how it turned out so beauteous is beyond me. You know, the Lord was so good to just make me feel confident in the fact that that's the way it has to be. And notice the paper's not all the way over to the organza ribbon, which is my fold, which is my little gusset um, area there. Now, I yeah, let's just sit right there. I'm trying to distract you from seeing... I tore that leaf off. I had to get after this magnet. I didn't want the magnet there. It wasn't serving any purpose to have that magnet there uh, because it was too small. I had to put another one on there. I had, I mean, this this car, this album won't get through customs. I'll tell you that right now. There. <laughs> This won't get through customs because there's so many magnets on it. They're going to wonder what what's in this box. What's in this box that's, uh, you know, uh, they might have a, uh, um, something that's magnetic there, like a magnetic uh, uh, tank or something in the airport. And this box is going to fly across everything and stick to it. <laughs> that's what I envision. You know, some great big... Uh, uh, fridge that's magnetic or something, you know, and all of a sudden my box goes flying off the belt and goes over and sticks to it. <laughs> yeah, Carol, you have a huge imagination. I do. I do. Helps carry me through life. So here we go. I've got my flower put back on. Yeah, I'm just pressing it down. Sorry, I'm spitting all over my island here. Um, yeah, it's good to have fun. It's good to have fun when you do an edit. I mean, I'm not crazy I don't think I just have fun that's my middle name I enjoy it if yeah <laughs> I don't know how I do it look at that I tried to get it back up and I thought that's not going that's exactly the piece of paper that's made for this side right there polka dots you can't get it up that double-sided tape is fantastic isn't it so there you go. I'm covering up 14 magnets and probably 22 washers under there. And we're going to move on. You can see that, but wait till you see the end result of this. You are never going to know. It does not look like... When you look at the actual page, this actual page, it does not look like you had struggles with it. It came out exceptional for me. I was really pleased with it. I thought 
I would have to tear most of it and start over, you know. Uh, but I didn't because I was really, really happy. All the magnets worked. All the washes worked. I mean, how could they not work right? Somewhere they would find the mate. Because <laughs> they were all over the place. So I took my Altenew little die cutting machine here. And I took the Elder, LDRS Creative Love Die. I love LDRS Creative Dies. You know that. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous with the hearts? It's made for a bridal album for sure. And it has the hearts. It's beautiful. I am going to add it in black because it'll pop out that heartfelt creation die I slid down in the larger pocket I made. And, you know, I think when I watch tutorials, seriously, I, I'm going into serious mode. Um, I like to see what people do if something happens and it doesn't really work out the way it should. And they show you how to fix it. Um, I mean, I think it's wonderful if you don't have any mistakes when you create. I don't think there's very many of us out there that don't make some kind of error and learn from it. The second, third, fourth, fifth time of doing something over and over again, the end result is always better to me than the first time you tried it. Now, excuse me, I want to remind you to wash your plates. Like if you use black cardstock, get a baby wipe because the indents will cause the paper phrase to go down in there. And if you use white paper next, you're going to notice it in the dye, the actual new dye you use. So I always baby wipe the acrylic uh, blocks to take the black off. And you will see a lot of the black when you do that. You may not see it on the plate itself, but look at that. Isn't that sweet? I was so happy with this. And, and all it is is a little different fold. I wanted to have earrings um, hanging on there, hanging on the eyelets, you know, but it didn't work out. So the bride's going to have to throw the earrings in the envelope thing I made. Remember that envelope on page two or uh, maybe it's page five. I can't remember. Five, I think. Uh, so I don't want this to be too, too high. I didn't put another layer onto this because of the magnet issue. I didn't want to have to put another magnet over this. I mean, really, that would have been really too much. But I'm lightly taking my finger, and there's no oozing glue, I don't think, that I can see. Then I needed to add a little bit of pink, so I die cut um, some pink hearts that were just a little bit bigger, I'm pretty sure. I have a Stampin' Up! that punches out three hearts. I never thought of that one, but I had a heart... I had a uh, Gemini die that had three hearts on it, so I decided to use that. Look at it. Love it. I love the end result. I love everything about this flip page. It has. It ends up having one flip up, two flips to the side, one flip down, and this side flip. you got to love it. And here you go. Then I found ways to use my raindrop diamonds, too. That's off to the left there. I hope you like this as much as I do, you know. When when mishaps happen, you second guess yourself with the end result, you know. You, you second guess, well, you know, should I, is it too much? Is it too bulky? Is it, uh, you know, well, I mean, everybody that sees it's going to know that there's things underneath. But, you know, in most cases, all my projects, I've had to do some retake and remake on it. And I'm always happier with the second or third result. Always. I can tell you that. I never uh, get discouraged. And then I thought of adding the pink here. I think I actually do because it needed a pop of pink. There was pink on the right. And I thought, no, I like this. I think I added it. I don't know. What do you think? Maybe I decided not to. I went with the triangular thing. There was two pink on the right and the left lower. So I'll pink it in the center. Well, I kind of slid the bar across a little bit just to peek, and I didn't use it. I decided to use it as a small tag instead to put a, you know, just a little tag. And then I had my Nouveau Sparkle Glitter Pen. It's the Glitter Marker Nouveau, and it's in the Strawberry Bonbon. Um, 
yeah, so I just colored it with that and I just had to add one of the little pearls came off. And you don't, don't forget if you add pearls to anything, and here I'm just using the Nouveau pen to color in just to add some little glitter on this. And then I'm going to put this on black as to have a little black edge to it. But back to the pearls. You can put your glossy accents over top of the pearls. Just run a line straight over top of your pearls. It'll seep down in and you won't lose your pearls. Uh, especially using a lot of single ones like I did there. And now you have it. Isn't that pretty? It's just glittery. It, you can use it or not. It doesn't matter. And then why not just cut an edge off? <laughs> this is so funny. I really find it funny to do an edit, say, you know, a couple of days after you've created whatever project it is and see things that you didn't remember you did. And here I put a little white edge around it. And we'll get back to that. I'm sure I used it on something, but I'll see it when you see it. And uh, to add to this, I thought it'd be kind of sweet to add the silver thin line there. And because the line is longer than the bottom line, uh, I think it just draws the eye away. I am a firm believer of those eyes going only in the direction you want them to go. That's it. Because uh, you don't want to look down that pocket, that's for sure. <laughs> See all those magnets and those washers and old rings and, you know, six pockets. <laughs> Not really. You know there's only one little pocket under there. But I love the way it stands out. I could have put, I could have scored the side with two little quarter inch gussets on there you know like an accordion on each side to make it bigger but I didn't want anybody having the opportunity of looking down in there no way so I left it flat and I think it's fine people would just think whatever you put in there that's why it's sticking up like that yeah an illusion everything's an illusion so here we go right around the triangle we're going to put some of the single beautiful glitter and like I said my dear friends that follow me and sit in my craft room with me and join me each time I put a tutorial up. You know I don't create. <clears throat> I try to create outside the box. I try to do what I feel comfortable in my creative mind. And so, like I said, this, this kind of creation isn't for everybody. And it may be um, challenging to follow, but I think you could make a card out of every section. That love front there could be a card alone. The little pocket area could be a card with putting the pearls in and, the, and a tag in. It could be a card. And then I'm going to have another tag. I measured to have the triangle so that I could fit it down inside there easily. And that's what I'm doing here. I would like to have a pull-out tag, and then I just cut, uh, I think it was a half-inch circle, and put it on the actual tag. See these teensy-weensy pearls? I was going to put them along this um, black cutout to pull out the tag, you know? But I thought, no way, it is going to, um, yeah, I'm cleaning off the acetate, it's going to lift up and then my magnets aren't going to work. Yes, I'm going back to the magnet thing. It's all about the magnets. They have to work. I can't put another layer over top. I mean, oh, I mean, I have another page on the opposite side. So uh, I'll have every page. I won't need another magnet on the right hand side of this project right there because everything will stick. Okay, so let's get off that. I know. Um, here we go. Just set your paper over top, get your nice little black edging out of it and cut it. It's nice to have the cutting board right there, isn't it? And speaking of my smaller Fiskars, I had a little bit of difficulty with my large Fiskars. You know the self-sharpening one I use when I make books? Uh, I brought it to Michael's in Niagara Falls, Ontario. Of course, I'm Canadian. And I want to give a huge, wonderful shout out to the managers there that work there. They took my Fiskars cutter without any questions asked and uh, they were remarkable. So thank you so much, Melissa and Amanda. 
they were wonderful and I said that in this video they would be getting a huge shout out so it's the Niagara Falls Ontario Michaels I love shopping there they're always friendly and helpful and uh, if it wasn't for Melissa and Amanda I would not have my new Fiskars uh, cutter so my self sharpening cutter so thank you Melissa and thank you Amanda I hope you're having a wonderful day a wonderful day you sure made mine when I came in there so take care and if you're shopping near Niagara Falls head over there to Michaels and while you're in there say hello to Amanda and Melissa tell them Carol sent you <laughs> yes just two nice people and I sure do appreciate all your help all the help you gave me so let's move on now to the pages in the Heartfelt Creation album. We're going to put black down, black cardstock, 65 pound recollection cardstock, which I do get at the Michaels in my area. And I'm just trying to seat everything to see how much room I'm going to have. So I will measure it out with my wonderful Victor ruler paid only $2.98 in the clearance bill at my bin at my stationery store so watch for it because it has all of the measurements so I'm going to use this I want to add uh, fabric as, along this album alongside of paper so I need to have um, let's see probably an inch overhang so I thought I'm going to cut this all off here as you will see. I'm going to start cutting it. I want to have that kind of, uh, it looks like a heart. It just doesn't connect there, just kind of halfway along. Isn't that pretty? So I sat and I cut uh, this whole roll so that I just had the heart kind of, you know, uh, pattern on there with the hanging um, filigree. Kind of feathery like so I thought I'll get out I cut a piece off of the bridal gown of satin because I am going to use satin on the cover of this album and it will be quite unique as you'll see later on in the tutorial but I wanted to hang this up and I wanted it to be as wrinkle free as possible because you will see some of it not all of it it's not that important and I got out my uh, excuse me you're gonna get burnt with the iron <laughs> It's not glue, it's the hot iron. So I didn't know if I was going to use this later on. I had this in my stash. It's completely different. It's kind of like uh, shells, you know, uh, offset shells. It's a beautiful, beautiful lace trim. So I made sure that I ironed across there and hung it up close to me on one of my light stands in case I wanted to use it. And uh, yeah, I love having this travel iron and this uh, little um, thingy I have here. Oh, and this piece is off a wedding gown as well. It has pearls, as you can see, sewn right into the uh, material. So I'm going to show you what I do so that none of those pearls will come off. But first I needed to get out some bags of this, uh, it's called Snow Drape. It's the, uh, what's the name of this stuff here? It's the batting, the flat batting, and um, yeah, just cleaning up a little bit. Uh, you want to have the, you can get it separate, but this was at my dollar store, believe it or not. It wasn't a dollar, I think it was two fifty dollars a bag, something like that. I'm just making sure that my glue is not yellow because I'm working with white. So that's why you see me going over there and releasing some of the glue. And it will harden there and I'll be able to throw it out. That's the problem with sitting for a long time. I really should have it unplugged. But anywho, that's the way I work. And I'm getting rid of everything here. A little bit organized because I am going to work on the satin album. Actually, I'm going to be working with the black pages. But I want to prepare before that to the... I wasn't sure what I was going to do on top of the satin as far as the album is concerned, but I may, I went to my stash to see if I, I didn't want to open a new bag, let me jump in there, of the uh, batting. So I found some in a bag that I had used on a different project way back when. So I started on my pages. Now, I had this half inch tape and I knew it was my last roll because it's the roll that has that 
burnt edge. It must have been near my glue gun. That's the only reason I can think of having that burnt edge. But I knew it wasn't going to touch anything because I had, well, I had black paper going over top. I am going to put black paper over all of it. But I ran out of my half inch. I'm out of my ATG um, tape. Can you believe it? So I thought, okay, I got to go to my Fiskars Big Daddy, the, I don't know if it's uh, 9 inches or 11 inch um, tape, you know, the double-sided tape. I ran it through there, but I wanted to use up as much of this tape that I did have right down to the end of the roll. And I didn't want to go with quarter inch because that's a lot of tape. I, I mean, do I live on the edge or what? Putting my pop right there all the time. I don't know how. I think I've had one mishap, and I think it was with cho chocolate milk. I don't think it was with pop. But, uh, yeah, i got to knock that off and not put my pop so close. That would be dangerously terrible if it fell on this white album. Can you only imagine with all of that on there? Well, let's move on. I take out my Xyron machine. I think it's the uh, 9 inch or 10 inch. I can't remember. I'm just dusting it off because I have it on top of my uh, unit in my craft room. You know, the thing with all the bins in it, the 9 bins. I can't ever remember what that's called. But I store it on top and I thought, okay, let's get the album out. Make sure everything is just right. I want these black pages to be exact. I want each page to only show the exact amount of white around the edges as possible, as close as I could get. I think it looks clean and fresh and it gives you a new beginning to put all of your uh, work in there because I have quite a bit of it I need to place and get ready. So this is what I did. I cut it all out of the Recollection 65 pound i just showing you a, a satin rosette that I had. I'm going to cut them all down to the right size that I had here, and it's wonderful. I just kept cutting and kept thinking I all the things that I need to move forward and create as I was cutting this. And I tell you what, I am so thankful, and I know all of you are as well, for the products that we have. And what a blessing it is to be able to create like this and to share one another's creativity. I think I have to cut into a new uh, bag, or excuse me, a new package of the black 65 pound cardstock. Isn't that wonderful? So that means I used 50 sheets. That's great. And uh, I like working with this. I'm, you know, I'm used to working with the 110 pounds. So here we go, the uh, Xyron, Big Baby, the granddaddy of Xyrons, came out, and I made a mistake there. <laughs> I didn't wait long enough. I'm trying to conserve on the the glue, you know, because it's, that's not cheap either. But I do go to Michael's and get it when it's on sale. I get I use the coupons, so I'm able to buy the um, the you know the unit that goes down into here, so we have sticky back on all of it. Take a ruler, that's what I did. I just grabbed my small ruler to go over it to put the sticky on the page. And then we're going to start. Now, I recommend that you put a black sheet. See, you cannot see the proper distance if you don't have something black behind it. And that was a miracle that that came off right there. Because once you stick this, it's stuck. So I decided to do all the pages where I didn't have double-sided tape first. And isn't it lovely? It was just coming together. And when I haven't done, you know, I'm not an album maker. I'm not an album creator. And I always keep that in the forefront of my mind to not get too um, hung up on imperfection when you're doing this because this is not something I do all the time. So I don't want to be too rough on myself, too hard on myself, you know. And I don't want you to be too hard on yourself either because there's always ways of turning things around. And you will see that. I stuck a page down and literally had to tear it right back up because it was, um, it just didn't work well. Yeah, I needed to have a sip. I'm really cutting back so you know that. Thank you for your prayers. Um, 
with my blood pressure issues. Look at there it is. <laughs> I didn't take you through the suffering of having to rip it out, but I covered it. I took as much off without ripping any of the white card stock. You don't want to do that. I took one of these pages that, um, you know, I didn't cover all the way and I put it on because I was able to do that. I had double sided tape underneath it. So that worked well for me. And then I'm going to use the next sheet um, and put just some tape on there. And don't forget to grab your piece of paper so it's all even. And I'm telling you, there's something, there's my ruler. I love the fact that you can see right to the 32nd inch, you know. It has the quarters, the 16th, the 8th, and the 32nd uh, measurements in this $3 ruler. I love it. I will go, I'll leave the link. I'm going to make sure I go over and check that out for you so you can see where you can get it really inexpensive. That one was $3. The other one was $9, the, the one that's metal. But I, my heart was truly rejoicing over the fact that it all came together for me here and how nice it looked. Uh, I'm just like you are. Like I, I want to, you know, with showing it on YouTube, you want to be mindful that uh, you keep it real. And I say that in the fact that I know people keep it real. That's not what I'm saying. That you're not, you don't fear showing your mistakes, your errors, you know. And especially how you uh, remedy the situation when you make them. And so I just, you know, although I know my videos are super long, and, excuse me, this one especially. <laughs> but it's, I wanted to put as much of the creation of this in there. And I have some projects coming up in the near future that I think you're really going to like after I finish this album. This has really helped me learn and grow working with paper and fabric together. Um, and I'm going to the edge with this. I'm going right to the edge of where the start of the lace trim right there from La Hobby Lobby, right at the start. See how I didn't keep it the same cut as the pages? It is larger. And there's a reason for that because I'm putting down, yes, this uh, ribbon right here. This lace trim, excuse me. Uh, well, I'm trying to pick one out. Let's just say that. This is nice too, isn't it? Uh, and I cut all that other stuff. And then I took out the batting because I have to keep in mind, okay, what are you going to do? And there's that pop. It's making me nervous and it's my pop. But so far, I have not. Look it. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, yeah. Me with a bad heart. And look what I'm doing. Oh, yes. So here we go, just tuck it in. This is as much as I needed. So I'm getting rid of my yellow glue and I'm thinking, is this what I want to do now? Oh no, I don't want to start gluing that here. That is not the move I want to make. I suggest to you that you think it out before the glue process goes in. Now here is the spine. Uh, obviously the spine goes over and I wanted to have this piece of material now, here we go. Let's stop right here. I'm going to take my glue and I'm going to dot every spot the needle went down in and then came back up through. Because if you're going to do any cutting, you want to make sure you don't, you know, you don't lose all of those beautiful pearls on the other side. And then I put some satin over top of it to give it extra security. And this is just off of a wedding gown, a small uh, wedding gown. As you can see, it's about a quarter of the piece. And I was thinking of just putting this on the spine, okay? This piece with uh, the pearls sewn in. And if you want to, you can use your hot glue and gun and put dots on all of the you know, where the needle went through the fabric so you don't lose any of your pearls. Or you can use the liquid glue and do that. Double-sided tape is wonderful as well. If I had had my Xyron, 
uh, excuse me, my ATG with glue in it, I would have just ran down all of the backing before I put this um, uh, material over top, the satin, and I burnt my finger bad. Oh yes, I am right now crying, <laughs> literally. That was a major burn. You can see I put a Band-Aid on it. When I ripped off the glue, my skin about, you know, we have seven layers of it. I think I had six of them disappeared. It was bleeding. It was horrible. So I had to cover and clean that up because I'm working with, I'm sorry I was so graphic, but it really hurt. Those hot glue burns are terrible. So please, 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 please. I should have had those little finger things on there, you know, with the rubber on it. I really should have. I have them but I find it hard to create with them. So here we go. Let's, uh, this was going to be, like I said, going over top of the page here of the actual, you know, back portion. Now, I wanna share some, I have an old envelope I'm using right there. So to, look at me, on the edge again, I am working on top of the album, on top of the album. Who does that with my pop right up there? <laughs> Sorry, I'm like uh, blubbering all over the place there, but uh, it scares me to look at it. And I don't even think about it at the time that I'm working on my project, my actual white project. So here, all of a sudden, it came to me, Carol, make a wedding gown. Stop what you're doing. Forget about the spine. Forget about covering the spine. Let's make a beautiful wedding gown. Let's design it. Well, I say let's because it's, you know, with the Lord's help, it's the Lord, me, and that's what we work. We're a great team together, yes. And I thank the Lord for helping me out here. So I needed to cut off. I'm just going to share the process with you, okay? As best I can as I was creating a wedding gown. Now, you know I don't sew. That's not any big news to anybody. I have a beautiful Singer electronic machine, but I don't sew and I'm going to start to learn. Here I found this in my stash. This is uh, buttons that I had and I am going to use them on the inside. now. I'm pulling in some pleats to make the waistline come in. But I did not want to do a girly girly, like a model type, you know, size zero wedding gown for the front of this album. This is going to be the focal point of this album. And I wanted to keep the dress real, in real size time, you know, of uh, we're not all a size zero and I didn't want it to look like some model uh, wedding gown. I wanted it to look like the average person that buys a wedding gown and I don't know, you know, I think you know where I'm going with that. I just wanted to keep everything super real and um, yeah, and I thought that figure on this was real. It wasn't uh, teensy weensy figure. So here I ha I thought, okay, what about we put buttons? I didn't know whether how much, yeah, I'm jumping all over the place because I'm going so fast. But um, yeah, that pop is so scaring me here. I had buttons of two sort. This button, I had the two sides, you know, the one side where right here I'm doing up the buttons. And then I had the other color, which is the true color white. This is more to the uh, pearl white the off white so uh, I have to just there's the other one I have to decide because I don't want to waste any fabric at all so I decide to make it as a belt so I cut off any of the bulk and uh, cut up only what I needed there now you can see I'm dealing with two seams that are different uh, on you know, I have one seam to the left. Oh, I guess you can't see the other seam. And then I'm wondering, okay, where am I going to put these buttons, you know? And then I thought, just make it like it's a belt. Just make it like it's a 
belt around this uh, wedding gown. And I started with it smaller. I don't know what really I was thinking about here because I couldn't have a flowing gown. I couldn't create a flowing gown because I only had eight inches uh, long to create with, you know, from top to bottom was eight inches. So you're working with a small amount of time. And because I made the gown uh, larger fitting, opposed to, you know, a Barbie doll size, uh, I thought I'm going to have to shorten up the bodice and the bottom. So here I'm just adding some extra buttons. It just looked a little bit off. They were too far apart for me. So I cut them off and I added them in between. And I was really happy. And I am going to slow it down a little bit here for you in just a second. So coming up, I'm going to slow this down. And it's going to add to the time. It's going to add 15 more minutes. But I wanted to show you how I did this to create the length I needed from the belt to the bottom of the skirt of the bridal gown. So this is what I did. I took another sheet of this and I put a few, um, I think I put uh, one pleat in it where that seam was going. I'm just trying to see how I created this. I thought of putting like a cape effect over it to, uh, I'm, I'm working with the theory of drawing the eye away in some way. Uh, I have to, I'm going to put sleeves on this bridal gown. Let's take another drink of Coca-Cola and go right over top of the album. I am so sorry. You know, if you are really finding it difficult <laughs> to view it while you're watching that, I don't spill anything on it. So we're good through the whole thing. You don't have to worry. So here we are. I have to add this to the bottom. I'm working only with my glue gun, which I enjoy. I really do enjoy it. Um, and it's fun. It really is to work with material. And I really, it pushes your creativity right to the max to create a little mini bridal gown. It's beautiful to, uh, to create. It really is. And you're just kind of thinking, okay, you put all of your tucks and your pleats where they should go and this is really funny because my mom who's in heaven now would just have a big smile on her face because she, all my sisters sew their beautiful seamstress seamstresses like my mother uh, was and um, I didn't take to sewing at all even in high school I took home ec cooking and yeah that only makes sense right instead of doing sewing classes I just did not like to sew didn't take to it at all and as you can see I'm still not sewing <laughs> I'm glue gunning yeah so I'm putting all my darts in here and giving it some little pleats and we're going to add that to the bottom and you say to yourself well you're going to see that line going across you're not I'm going to camouflage that as well and camouflage and covering up and all the things we do as creators is uh a wonderful learning experience, isn't it? You know, who's who to thunk I'm making a bridal gown for the front of this album? And I was even questioning it, whether it would be something that would work, you know, and it wouldn't be overpowering and overtake the project in, in a way, you know. But I don't think it does in the end. And I'm going to show you the few things I'm going to do to really add some pizzazz to this album. Um, you, you're going to enjoy it. So this has to go on to give me some more length. And you can see the batting on the back. I, I have a little bit of fabric that was turned over onto the batting. And I went into my stash and I have this roll. I think it's six feet tall and it is, um, I don't know, it has a pattern in it. On the next video, I'll show you. It has a pattern in it, and it's see-through. It looks like it would be for table covers or uh, making a tablecloth or something like that. It's so fine and see-through. It's just beautiful. And I took a piece of that, uh, and that would actually make good Tyvek. I never even thought of that. I bought it five years ago when I first began. I was at a sale. Here I go with my cutting. I get to use my nice new scissors. 
I love these scissors. And uh, I'm going to try to keep them for fabric only. I think I've strayed a few times onto paper, but I want to keep them for fabric. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. I don't care about that. I'm covering it with satin, so that's okay. So here we go. I'm putting this on the front, but it is going to be camouflaged, so I don't mind. The hot glue, just make sure that you take the yellow out if it's been sitting a long time. And I'm going to show you how to work with something that's crooked if you're creating. Now, if you're a seamstress, yeah, right to the knife, right? Taking as much of that glue off as possible. But if you're a seamstress, this will probably come easy to you. But if you're not a seamstress, I want to make it look easy. It is easy. It's not difficult to do this. It takes a little bit of time and thought uh, as far as the process, but it it's not that hard to do. Um, and I had to correct some things, like when you're looking at this, the right-hand side is longer than the left-hand side. The right-hand shoulder is off, but... And, We'll remedy that. Now I put some uh, glue just to hold it here, some wet glue. And then I go in the back and I tack it down with the uh, hot glue. And then I'm going to get that roll. There is uh, oh, hundreds of feet of this almost like see-through felt. I, I don't even know what it is. It's absolutely stunning and professional looking. It has the plastic over this big bolt. And uh, I don't even know where I got it. But I'm so thankful to have it because I'm going to use it as Tyvek. I just thought of that as I'm doing this uh, voiceover. So I went right around here. I have to cut into it so that it's not tight. It's not pulling on the front, right? And here's where I start to get truly excited. This is where I cover up the seam that went across, you know, the, the, uh, the addition to the gown. This is where I cover it up. And all I could think of was, uh, um, oh, I can't think of her name, on Gone with the Wind. And where she made the drapes, you know, when uh, her nanny made the, the dress, you know, out of the drape, that beautiful green velvet dress. That's what I was thinking of when I was doing this because it looked like a curtain, the nice scallops in there and I love Gone with the Wind. Oh my, yes, I could watch it 24-7. But here we go. Um, so I'm just tacking a little bit of these beautiful um, scallops onto the dress so that you don't see the seam going across there. And it's just getting prettier and prettier. And it's not like I said, it's not a dress like a model. It's not super thin. I could have made it like that, but I'm not super thin. And I thought, no, I'm going to make this as realistic as possible. So I, I have to keep it in the realm of the size of the album. I have eight inches to work down. I'm pretty sure it's eight inches. And, um, uh, Oh, you've got me wanting to measure that now. Just a second, I think it is. Let me see. Uh, actually, it's almost nine inches. I have eight and three quarter inches I have to work with. So now I'm going to uh, work on the top part. So I cut this off and I wanted to match it like a, you know, a little shawl type thing. So I glue this on and it's, you know, not looking too bad, but I'm telling you, I could see the one shoulder was larger than the other one. So I did have to work with that, but I didn't worry about it yet. Like this was not my big deal thing that I'm going to, you know, worry about right now. I want to get this shawl type thing on before I add the two sleeves. I didn't want it to be sleeveless. I wanted to add those raindrop pearls, you know, that matched the, um, the envelopes, remember I had the envelopes and it looked like a gown on the top. It had the scoop in it to put uh, pictures in. So I wanted to use that, the pearls, you know, in this project. So, um, sorry, some of it I had to bring it up close to me. Now, because you're going to see it, I had to cover right around the neckline 
like right around because you're going to look down onto it. You don't want to see the batting or anything. So I covered it, but a lot of process. Um, it's so easy to make corrections because those great big scissors just cut perfectly. I just cut it off. I cut it off and I glue it. You know, where I see it's too, you know, uh, chunky here or it's too thin there, I just cut it and re-glue it. There's no, this didn't give me any problems at all as far as, you know, getting a headache over it. <laughs> yeah, thinking, oh no, what am I going to do? It didn't. I just went with it. So here I get out my jewelry. Here's the beautiful necklace I have. And I want to add the diamonds to it. And this had the pearl drops on the end, right? It had two like pearl things. And then I liked this brooch and I stuck it in there just to keep viewing it. It wasn't to stay there. It was to get a vision of what I had to work around. And I'm so glad I pinned it onto here because you know why? It was too big. It was too big. It was pulling my eye to that spot. And um, you don't want the center right there to be the attraction, you know. Um, it's nice. It does look, you know, I, I wanted it to have that older antique vintage look to this uh, wedding gown. And it did. It was nice. But once I added puffy sleeves, it was way too much for the top portion of uh you know, the, the actual dress, let's say. So once I got done working with that, keeping it kind of straight, I took it off and I went with something else. And I'm so glad I did. Uh, yeah, I was just measuring it out. And I could tell that on the right-hand shoulder was much puffier. Uh, it went up. And I just cut it off. I really did. The point on there, I just cut them straight. And you'll see that I do that. And then the bottom was a bit too... Uh, long it was longer on the right side than it was the left side here i just tacked it with a little bit of the e6000 i didn't end up using this brooch but because i put so little on there it didn't affect it whatsoever because the earring i ended up using uh covered it so you know this is all experiential learning for me as well so here we go on the back i had to tape down material on the back uh, because I'm going to have to seat it on that satin and flatten it. I don't want it to be this poofy. Here I took that one corner right off. You'll see it. It, uh, it just really added to it. Then you have to remember you have to make the chest area, right? It has to come out and in and be well proportioned. Now here I wanted to have the illusion of, um, I don't know, not seeing all the imperfection of the actual gown. So I pulled it together again, adding some little pleats. I got this um, veil material, and uh, I'm going to cut it a little lower than the actual dress. And I glued that on, and it's a crispy uh, material. It is not fine. It has that crispiness to it. Uh, I think you know what I mean. It just uh, shapes itself very nicely on here. I think the material is called tulle that I'm working with right here. I was trying to rack my brains trying to think, but it's a nice crispy. It's not flowy and soft. It's a crispy uh, material. So here I'm trying to look to um, work in the dropped pearls here uh, and I still have to make the dress uh, longer but I'm going to work with the actual um, right here the arms on it I was having a little bit of difficulty I love this drape look I was just going to drape it over the top of the shoulders you know uh, to try to cover up the right hand that looked a little bit bulkier um, than the left. So, yeah, some of my papers, oh yeah, I left this in the end, I can't believe I did. Some of my papers fell off the island to my left. So I thought, okay, Carol, just stop what you're doing and get them in the clip. 
properly and put them off to the side and uh, then start again. There's nothing worse than trying to create your chairs wheeling over nice papers. You can't do that. So I grabbed my clip and um, clipped them off. I'm looking to see, okay, where's my clip? Where did my clip go? And I'm just actually, I guess I'm cleaning up trying to, so I can think straight to design uh, this, the rest of this dress. So I apologize for that. I guess I could stop and take it out, but it only lasts for a second. And then we're off and running once I get a little cleaned up. So I grabbed a piece of paper that was a different color than white for underneath. And I'm going to my satin. Uh, I'm trying to grab a shape. I was wondering, okay, should I put satin uh, on the bottom? And then I thought, no, Carol, do the sleeves like this. I'm going to slow this up as well, I think, uh, in a bit, just so that you get it. I made it so it was a, like a cone at the top. And then I glued it down the center of the cone. Then I'm going to stuff it with that um, nice batting. Just a second here. I wanted to have the sleeve poofy at the bottom, so I needed to have just a space to be able to slide some batting up in the sleeve, make it pointy so that uh, you know it wasn't really fat on the shoulder. I didn't want to add any more bulk to the shoulder, so I had to take the tool off the top that's already glue gunned down. I just moved it over there, and then I thought, no, don't start ripping, just cut it, Carol. Cut it off, and then uh, add it to the sleeve. Now I will add some beautiful uh, beadwork to this so you won't be able to see it. It's like the old cover-up thing. We're just going to keep covering it until we're happy with the design and I need to turn it over so you don't see the seam part and remembering that the back of everything that you design you will not see it if you're going to put it down on top of something, right? If it's not something you're going to see. And then I wanted to have it so it was holding, like I was going to put a flower bouquet that the bride was holding, but I changed my mind. And I still might change it to something else. Um, I did a heart, like a purse style effect, uh, and I did put a flower in it, but then I wanted to put a nice white Bible and have it open. My little one inch mini books that I make, um, well that I have made for different projects for cards, I think I'm going to make it, I'll either put that as, um, put it in her hand with it open, or I'm going to close it and add it to the actual design some way, maybe the closure. So here we get to put the beads facing in, the, those drop pearls to match. I cut the batting off and then I take one of my, um, they're my Chinese stir sticks that I have. Uh, I'm going to push it up, I think with that, uh, because it's nice and long. I'm going to work it up the side. Oh, for now it's a paintbrush, yes, but I think I got my uh, chow mein stir sticks my rice picker up or Chinese sticks. Yes, you know I keep those when I get a takeout order and I use them for stirring. I use them as stir sticks. So here we go. I put some batting. You don't want too much. You don't want it to be really bulky and then cut off what you think you won't use um, as far as the turn here. And that's what I did, plus a little bit more. And yeah, you can see, I did a little bit more and then I will close it off with the glue right here. And you can see I'm a little bit more careful, right, using the silicone spoon. And so that's one sleeve. And I get to incorporate the raindrop pearl beading like I have in the previous uh, page. So that was nice. And that one is finished and I was super duper happy. This is not, uh, something, you know, that is perfection. This is, uh, as much as you want it to be perfected, uh, there's, a person's not going inside this gown. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I did the best I possibly could as far as designing a wedding gown. I've never designed a wedding gown. So this was a new experience for me, and I love it because it's tiny and weeny teeny. So that was nice. And here you go. I still haven't learned about my bad finger there. I'm just bringing it up to show you. 
and then I'm going to proceed to make another one and cut it out of this piece of satin that I had and keep every piece of satin you don't use. The smallest little piece will make the difference. Cut it like a teepee, kind of come in. Uh, I think I did another one. This one wasn't long enough. It wasn't wide enough, so I had to cut into it wider. Yes, you learn that, but I'll use that other piece for something else. I still have to make the bottom longer. So remembering that, and doesn't the tool just, uh, it just adds that, it, I don't know, it gives it like a candle, um, you know, lit background where it's, um, it's not so vivid. It takes away um, from the actual design underneath. It helps with any imperfection. That's what I'm trying to say, is putting the tool over top. You can still see the beautiful handiwork of the trims and the lace with the um, gorgeous, oh, look at the difference of those two glues. I wanted that pink silicone uh, round thing up there. I'm going to use that roller. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm going to bring it in, try to keep it as even as possible without measuring. Then I take out my Chinese stir sticks after I guess I get the, uh, the batting cut out and uh, set that aside. And we're going to work on this sleeve. It was just nice to grab my stash uh, trims and uh, jewelry and uh, things of that nature and work with it and get it out of the craft room, you know. Um, bring the stash down, so to speak, so to speak. So here we go. Can you tell on my Band-Aid I have lips on the Band-Aid? <laughs> it's not It's not what you're thinking, you know. It's not blood, I have to say that, because you're going to keep seeing it. What, what's that red on that Band-Aid? It's a set of lips. I got the box of it at Michael's. There was lips and mustaches, I think, on these ones. My grandkids think they're funny. So here we go. I am closing this up um, I think there was just a bit too much batting on this one I had to remove some of the batting and uh, yeah I love working with the glue gun instead of sewing I think it's just it's like instant gratification of sewing something and having it look like it's been sewn that really appeals to me for some reason so I sped this up really quick because it's just the other arm. I wanted you to just see the process of it and uh, the fact that you're not going to see the back of it. You're only going to see the sides and the front. So it's like creating a half a dress, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> you're not going to see the back. So it took away a lot of pressure there. Oh, I love these Ginger scissors. It just cuts like, oh, like I know the saying is butter, but it truly is. What a beautiful scissor. Oh, just beautiful. Oh, yeah, there goes my chop suey stick there. And, uh, yeah, just cut it. Make it not too much of a point at the top. But we are going to use beautiful beadwork across the top of the dress. And uh, thank you very much. If you stayed with me this long, thank you so much. I appreciate your time in my craft room. Now I needed to get out some, I'm thinking, I'm taking a break and I'm thinking about, uh, this is the, I think they're called craft mates. I'm actually thinking about the closure and uh, what I'm going to use. It's funny, it just hit me and I did this, but then I ended up using some diamond magnet closures and I think you're going to love it to close the album. They're magnets, but they have round, uh, it's like an egg and it's all diamond glitter. It's really pretty. So I'm going to make that as the closure so far. Yeah, it says Craftmates. I think I just saw in there. And uh, yeah, when I get a thought, isn't that hysterical? You're busy doing one thing and all of a sudden I'm thinking, oh, I've got these closures. I know I do. So anyway, here's some more trim off a bridal gown that I'm taking off. This was a trim that was on a train. And there's just yards and yards and yards and yards of it, rolls of it. And it's so nice to be able to finally use it. And I decided this clip was, yeah, I have to clip off that little piece of E6000. That really works. Yeah, had to use some muscles there. 
So um, let's see where we are. Oh, I grabbed this trim. This trim, it has, yeah, and I even went to a headpiece. I wanted to take off some of the floral pieces off of this uh, vintage. It's a 1950s bridal gown I bought. It's a vintage veil. And it has the beautiful uh, leaves, the sparkly leaves, and the beaded, um, it's kind of, you can see it, circular beads, uh, beadwork in there, and some sprays. So I grabbed some of that just in case I made a bouquet. And then I'm cutting into this soft veil. Um, I wanted to use some of the, um, what do you call that, organza? No. Uh, anyway, I'll get back to that between, yeah, just remembering all of the names. So I went around the shoulder with this. That's what I wanted to show you. It had a round cluster of floral beads. Then it goes smaller and smaller. So I put a nice round one on the shoulders, you know, padded shoulders. <laughs> They're back. No, I, I really, it just looked nice. You know, it was just a nice addition to the uh, bridal gown. Now, on the right-hand side, as you're looking at this, it does go up a little bit. So what I did is the old thing about uh, the eye uh, going in a different uh, direction, I put another great big large, uh, you'll see it in the pictures, uh, bouquet of beads there, a round floral piece of the beads. I put it going down so that the eye was directed downward and you didn't see the offset of the shoulder. Now I know that my hands are going to go together, but um, how far down do I want it to go, you know? on this veil material I have. I didn't want to cover up the button belt, so I grabbed this bag of satin roses I had. It's satin roses and leaves in all different shapes and, and uh, designs here. Some have six leaves, some have two, and they're all rosettes and they're all white satin, just beautiful. And at night, when I think about it, I grab some of the dresses and I cut off all of the applique and all of this stuff and put them in bags, zipped up bags, so that when I want to design something, if I ever do, and look at that, I'm doing that today. If I want to design something, I have it already cut off, packaged, and ready to go. So, yeah. I don't know what I'm looking for here. I will tell you. Oh, I'm just... You have to have one of these. This milk glass uh, is so pretty. This jar. I love pretty jars in my craft room. I love glass jars for my um, markers and my pencils and stuff like that. Vintage stuff, you know. And uh, yeah, so I'm just putting my scissors away and I'm thinking, okay, I have the these beautiful beads, clusters of beads on a roll. They look like opal, and I thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to add this to the bottom of the dress. I'm going to match the top portion to the bottom portion, I think. I think I'm not to Oh, I had to add it towards the back because you are going to see it head on, okay? Wait till you see the beadwork I got for the back. Did I already? Oh, see that batting? I already put it on the back of the bottom of the dress. See it? You can see it has a pattern of flowers behind it. It's very thin and see-through. But when you pull on it, it's like um, it's like Tyvek. It doesn't rip. It You can't rip it. And it's on a six-foot uh, roll, like, you know, that I have, that I bought from, I think it was at an upholsterer place that was going out of business. So anyway, yeah, I get excited about that. I put that on the back so the batting didn't come off. And I just glued it up and down. You'll see more of it towards the end. I'm just gluing the hands together here. And I, you can see the belt, so I was happy with that. And then I put these dangly um, trim on it. Where You can see the dangles there? I put that underneath the belt. So, um, yeah, and then I had this neck piece. But then I thought, no, that looks too much like putting an apron on the gown. 
you know, the apron comes later in your marriage. <laughs> yeah, I had to add that, right? Yes, you don't know anything about this apron thing when you first get married, but it comes later, yeah. And, you know, that's okay. Keeps your clothes clean. So here we go. I love aprons. I collect them, actually. Uh, vintage aprons, that is. So here we go. You learn something new every day, right? So here I'm thinking, okay, do I want like a little purse thing happening? Do I want a bouquet? Do I want just a flower? Do I want one of those one-inch mini books uh, made into a beautiful white Bible? I am going to make that anyway. You'll see that in the next tutorial. And um, this is too off-white, this one. Even if I cut into it, the applique was too off-white. But I guess I keep cutting at it. I have lots of pieces of applique. And then there was this piece, but like I said, it was too... <clears throat> I thought of just having it hang, but it covered up the dress too much. And it was in the cream color, so that didn't work for me. And I'm just going into different bags and seeing what I have as far as the stash. And here's where the earring came in. I had this nice long one. I'm sticking the pierced part down in there. And that looked kind of nice on there. I like that hanging at the top. It uh, made the bust line look nice and uh, it made the waist come in. It was nice. I, I like that. And then I had this one that had three streaming thing of diamonds, just string three different size diamonds. So I had to come up with, okay, which one? So I let this hang for a while and I looked at it and I did like it. I did like it, but it, there was just something about it that took away from the gown at the bottom. Once you see what I put on the bottom of the gown to give me some length, you'll see why I didn't go with this. Although, Boy, when I look at it now, it's awfully pretty, isn't it? Earring. Oh, <laughs> my daughter-in-law bought this for me years ago because um, I love bling uh, as a birthday gift. And it has the magnet on it. That's what I thought was so fun. Look at it. <laughs> I'm just being funny. This said nothing but look at it. Talk about magnets. Oh, yeah. Stuck right out. I just love bling bling. Mm -hmm. Yes. So my daughter-in-law got that. And it, it magnetizes together. I think it's so cute. So anyway, that was just a funny thing to add into the tutorial. Yeah, just trying to be funny before we end here. Are we ever going to end? That is the question. So let's move on and let's see what I do. I love the dangles on the dress there. I love this diamond earring, but I like the other one too. It was subtle. It was just subtle. I don't know. There was something about the other one. Now I had these hearts. Now the hearts look nice there. Oh, look at this. I love this piece of applique. I took this off of a bridal gown on the back of it. It, it just had tons of this. So I grabbed some of it and it is so crazy beautiful. Wait till you see it close up. It's just gorgeous and I'm putting it on the crinoline. That's what I was trying to think of, the crinoline. This is the thicker crinoline. Not the fine one. This is the more bulky one, the thicker crinoline. You can still see through it, but look at this. Oh, when you get to the pictures, uh, hone in on it, and it is beautiful trim. And so then I thought of the heart. I needed to cover, obviously, the hands, the no hands uh, part. So I put two of the hearts together. Um, and then I put some flowers in it. It doesn't really, uh, you know, there's no meaning to it. it. It could either look like a song book, you know, like you're singing in church, or uh, I can place a Bible over top of it and have the room for it where it's not falling. So I put it there for now, and I liked it. So whether I keep it just like this, I did put a flower on the inside because I had that bouquet idea. Here I'm trying to get the, backing off the earring so I could use this earring. I struggle with it for a little bit, but it does come off. And um, yeah, without wrecking my scissors, that was crazy. I do have snips. I don't know what I was thinking. Probably too lazy to get up off my craft chair. So here we go. This is the one I went with. I took some E6000 glue. It has three different lengths of um, dangle. 
And then when I put it down, it made this pattern right there. And I loved it. So I took the glue, the E6000, on my pokey tool, and I made it look like that. So that it was kind of all going over to a half moon shape. Oh, I loved it. It was just like the scallop on the trim there. Uh, it just gave that, isn't that pretty? Oh, I really love it. I love it. I love every trim that was used in this piece. Uh, the buttons, the trim on the bottom is beautiful. It has those beautiful uh, sequins. Isn't that gorgeous? I might back up and slow that down just a minute. So here you have it slowed down just a little bit. You can see the nice heart there. I'm going to slow the next portion down right here. And um, you can see through the veil that I put on there, the crinoline. You can see the nice trim. Now I needed one, I needed just a half an inch or maybe a quarter of an inch more. When I put the gown on the album, I was able to add just a little bit more. It was just a little short for me as a gown. Um, and it's a three quarter gown, it's not a full length gown. But I had this beautiful trim and um, yes, don't you love trim? I, I just think it's beautiful. It just takes my breath away to look at it. And I had my tweezers with the silicone ends on them. I'm starting to get smart now of not wanting to burn my hands off, my fingers. Yes, I already have one major burn. It's healed up now, so that's good. Uh, but that was that was a bad one. Yes. They're like, really, you know, if you've got burned by a glue gun, you know what I'm talking about. Aren't the sequins gorgeous here? It's like opals. I love opals. And I know that you're not going to see the, um, the back or the sides here. So um, I think I even put something um, more. I, I think I added to this. I think I realized that I cut it too short on the sides, so I did add and go all the way around the back a few inches on each side. Yes, I did. Because I thought, wow, Carol, you have it just cut there. You're going to see that on the sides. So I did remedy that. And I'm just showing you that I needed to add to the length of the dress. It was looking too much like it was an above-the-knee dress, and I wanted it to be a three-quarter length. I knew I couldn't have it a full length because of working with nine inches, but um, I got to use some of my beautiful trims. Like I said, I put it on the on the crinoline fabric alone. I didn't put it on the satin underneath, and I love those sewn-in pearls on that satin material. It's just gorgeous when you see it in real life. It is so pretty, just pretty. That's all I can say. And uh, yeah, so I cut off more of that other trim and I add it going around the bottom one there. Isn't that gorgeous? So delicate. I'm measuring one side to make each, to see that each side, I had to lower one side uh, than the other. I don't know. Isn't it funny how the eye catches those things? And that's why my ruler is so close to me. It's my buddy. Yes. And then I said, okay, Carol, go get some more of that trim and put it all the way around. I love these uh, um, tweezers with the silicone ends. I forgot I had those. It's wonderful. Isn't that pretty? There's nothing nicer than designing a wedding gown <laughs> to me. Oh, there it is. It's the top portion of that other portion I used on the top of the, uh, in the album and on this dress. That's what that was. Yeah, so I just added to it, swung it around the dress, and we are set to go. I just didn't even think of that, that, you know, you're going to see the sides of this on the album. And it's going to be seated on the satin. So I just went around. See that material thing I'm talking about there on that bolt that I have? Oh, just hundreds of yards of it. It's wonderful. Um, yeah, I'm working on... Uh, little gift um, ideas for hitting 20,000 subscribers and I think I'm going to package up some trims and some of this actual material.
that is like Tyvek. And uh, we can all use that on cards. Anything that folds would be lovely. So here we go. I, I kept this sped up. But I just love the earring. I love the way it swoops the opposite direction of the dang, you know, the um, the lace trim there that looks like uh, scallops. Well, it is scallops. That's why it looks like scallops. And now I'm just uh, looking at it to see if there's anything else I can add to it. I'm thinking about it sitting on the actual album. And uh, yeah, here's another idea, but it's just a headless gown. When you buy gowns, there's no heads on them, right? You're just buying a gown. <laughs> That's what I had to keep in mind. It's almost like I should have had something on the top. But I thought of putting these uh, opal pearls around there, but it took away from the sequin trim. I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to add anything. I was happy with that. I was happy with the poofiness of it. And then I can move on. Oh, yes, I'm just cleaning the glue off of my work um, board there. Yes, my cutting board. So I'm just kind of making sure there's nothing hanging or it's all even. Excuse your arms there. I want to make sure it's all even. And then I thought of putting a few flowers down there, but it took away from the trim. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Some, sometimes, you know, I said that in the last video, I think, like less is more. That's true in this instant. I don't want to put anything else on it. So, yes, wouldn't have done it. It's pretty, but it just didn't do it. Yeah, get it? No, 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 no. It's nice just the way it is. Oh, she's back. i got to get out of here. <laughs> yeah. So, anyhow, there you go. And um, I saw that I had a few new subscribers. I welcome you to my craft room. It's very nice. I don't call you subscribers. I call you my friends. And uh, thank you for joining me in my craft room now. I, I appreciate that. Appreciate your comments. I'm looking forward to the next uh, phase of this album, which will be the finish. Um, so here we go. I have to figure out what I am going to do as far as um, putting the satin on. And here's what I decided to do. I ended up, um, I lost uh, a video where I was, uh, and I'll show you that later. Uh, yeah, so I'm trying to think, should it be on the inside, outside, backside, or should it be on the case that I made for this, or I didn't make it, I bought it, that I'm going to revamp it though. Uh, I wasn't quite sure, but I thought, okay, let's go with the trim. I want the outside, when you see this book, the album, I want you to see the trim looking out from the inside out. So what I did is I went, I wanted it to be perfectly even. So what I did is I put a line on there. I think it was, uh, let's see, um, it was a quarter of an inch. No, it was an eighth of an inch. I went an eighth of an inch up. Then I put tape underneath it so that I had a, a double-sided tape so that when I put this lace trim on it, it's going to be perfectly even. And I know the top of the lace is going to seat on the double-sided tape at the top of this line. See how I'm drawing the line there? So you have it measured out. I was very careful to make sure that this, and why the double-sided tape, you ask me? It is to seat the, the trim. So when I used my hot glue gun, it would just hold it for me so it wouldn't slide on me. It had no other meaning. You know, that was not going to stick the trim, obviously. It just gave me a guideline to put the glue down. See how I was able to put it perfect? And the tops of those hearts, I made sure it did not go over the line. It was seated right on the line. So that, that's why I wanted this silicone roller out. It really helped save my fingers. And then you're going to go right along. I did not want to cut into this trim. I wanted it to go all the way around with no cuts in it. You know, that it was just one perfect flow. Just flew right around, just like the other trim. And um, 
Yes, and it really does make a difference to have a guideline, to make yourself uh, a guideline on here. And, um, oh, I did cut around the corners. Excuse me, I did. I cut it on the scallop there. And then I went around and then I cut off the leaf piece and hung it separately because it made a fold when I got to the corner. Yes, I remember now. But look how perfectly even. And then when you shut the book, those dangles are perfect. One is not higher than the other because you did the line, you know. It's actually uh, similar to a plumb line, you know, when you have the chalk line and you just flick it up and then you, the chalk goes on the floor and you have a perfect, like a laser line almost. Yeah, so this is just a crafter's plumb line and it makes everything easy. It's worth the extra time it takes to do something like this. And the double-sided tape is only to maneuver the... Um, trim you're using so it doesn't slip and slide. It'll stay on the double-sided tape and you know it's an extra bit of sticky which is nice. So I go across there making sure that the tops of these hearts so to speak are touching the line that I drew and um, yeah I think the line is a sixteenth of an inch. Um, it could be an eighth of an inch but I know it, yeah, it could be an eighth of an inch. Sorry, it's probably an eighth of an inch up. And then with using the sixteenth of an inch double-sided tape, that's how it worked, underneath the line. So, yes, whatever works for you. And then I cut it off here, which was perfect because I can add a dangle to the corners and you don't even know what happened, you know? Isn't this pretty uh, lace? Very inexpensive. I'm going to try and find it for you and link it up to my blog so that you have a direct link to the laces that, except for the wedding gown. But these trims I did get off of uh, probably eBay a while back. And uh, very glad I did because they were priced so reasonable. And uh, it's free shipping. To Canada so that was nice there you can see I added a dangle in the corner and whether it dangles or it doesn't dangle it's just the illusion of having it there in the corner I mean you can't have it dangling too low because you have nothing to seat it on but you have the look of it when I turn the album over you're going to see that it looks very nice but, 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 very nice <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm getting tired, so your poor ears must be just exhausted listening to me. So, oh, I just can't thank you enough. Here's another trim that I had in my stash that I thought might look very nice on the top of this going around because I had yards and yards and yards and yards of trim. Oh, my, when you buy a bridal gown, it is the way to go for trims. It truly is. Because you pick out the gowns you want. You pick out the era of gowns you want to work with and the beadwork. So here I go. I'm just sitting. This is the back page, as we all know. And um, I think you're really going to like the designs I added to the inside here of uh, the tags and the pullouts and the things that I um, created and adopted for this album. I had so much fun, you almost don't want to stop, you know. Now, doesn't that look sweet? Working with paper and adding lace. Beautiful combination. It marries itself together so beautifully. I really think it does. Now, I had this, uh, oh, I bought rolls and rolls of it. It, was, it went on for 99 cents at Tuesday morning. I'm pretty sure it was Tuesday morning. But it was a cream-colored ribbon. And it had these glass dangles, the glass dangles. I loved it. I did, if you can find, I'm going to link this up. I'm going to try to find it. I refurbished a vintage lamp on YouTube when I first started. Oh, this is my apothecary drawers. People ask me about my 60 drawers. I have 60 drawers of a long apothecary, six feet high and nine and a half feet long in my craft room and um, it's over a hundred years old. We I bought it at an auction and uh, put it in my craft room and I keep nothing but ribbon. This is my white drawer. I, I 
did not paint it. I did not do anything to it. I kept it in its real state and I adore it. And so all of my ribbons are uh, labeled and put in my apothecary. So I just wanted to show you that. I get I do get questions asking about my apothecary. I'll take a picture of it and uh, put it on my um, tutorial if I think of it here. So anywho, what was I saying? Oh, this beautiful lace. So it has the glass dangles, but I needed it to be white for what I'm going to do. So all you do is put double-sided tape you're, you grab yourself some satin ribbon, so it's the same size, which I think is a quarter of an inch. Well, I know it is. It's a quarter of an inch. So you grab your quarter of an inch double-sided tape. You put it on the cream uh, dangles ribbon. And it's so funny that each roll had the exact amount I needed for the this design I'm doing. You're going to love it. I just know... I am so happy with the end result of this album. I can't even tell you. I think it's just uh, pretty and unique, and uh, I'm proud of it. You know, I'm just, uh, it just has a little bit of me entwined into the work of my style. So, thank you for joining me to view that. It means so much to me. If you're new to my channel, like I just said, I keep my tutorials as real as real can be. You can't get any more real. <laughs> yeah, I don't try to be some something I'm not. Um, I'm, um, you know, I'm a beginner at so many levels, so many levels. But what I try to do is inspire you and take some relaxation time together in my craft room and, um, you know, use the things that we have in our craft stash that we have been blessed with and uh, share it together. I love your ideas. That's why we go to different channels to get inspiration. And uh, yeah, so thank you so very much for joining me. Now you're going to want to add liquid glue as well when you put the ribbon on. You're not going to have a problem with seeing through it because this glue is fantastic. The Art Glitter Glue, it dries clear. You have to just make sure when you order it, it is the clear drying glue. There's two kinds. There's the white or the clear. So be very mindful if you're new to buying glue. But like I said, the, the mono multi glue, is the Tombow glue, it's nice too. I have that as well. You know, whatever glue you find works for you, that's what you use. And over time, I have found that I'm very satisfied with the art glitter glue. I think that's my fave right about now and you know me I'm trying not to buy too much stash I'm trying to well supplies to add to my stash and so here you go I took my bone folder I love the Teflon bone folder if you can manage to get one of these you will be very happy it leaves no lines on your papers when you uh, run it across your paper you don't get any of that uh, waxy look you know that you get with other bone folders and it's the best investment I've ever made it really is so I'll leave the link to that too yeah I, so much to remember you know you say you'll leave the link you say you leave the link and then you feel so bad when you forget but uh, here we go I'm doing both lengths and the beads on this are beautiful they're antique looking which is so nice and they are a bonus added feature to any wedding album and like I say look at Tuesday morning that's where I got this over in Buffalo so we will have this portion done we're getting down to the end my friends and it, it was a pleasure working with you I really appreciate it I know it's long but you have that mouse and you can zoom it right over and just catch whatever part that uh, you want to watch you know so here we go. Let's start off. This is the back page. It is the this page was the inspiration for a wedding album right here. It's the teapot that I hand drew the roses and painted them, and the beautiful teacup. This is by Altenew. The teapot I drew myself and um, designed it. This is the booklet that is on another tutorial that has the waterfall on it. 
Here I'm trying to decide which pages I'm going to use. And I have some cute ideas for you in the next tutorial. Here's that page we just completed with the fold out on the side with the 4,000 magnets and washers. Here is the clip with the earring that is magnetized holding back the envelopes for extra pictures. Here's a tag of one of the tags that I made and uh, here's some more little um, doodads that I created. And of course the wedding ring pillow, I created that. And uh, with you, I created it with you. You know, with you in mind, I did. And it's using some of the trims too. See on the corners? It's the same trims I used on the bridal gown. So it all works itself together. Look at when you look at the trims on the side. It's I don't think it's too much. Uh, you know, you can add too much. To, there can be a limit to watching you have too much trim, especially if you're doing it with half paper, half trim. Or I start the outside to actually add the elements I created for the outside of this album. I wanted you to see the inside. I wanted you to look at uh, some of the ideas I had. I haven't placed these down yet. I needed to know that this closed properly. And uh, that's the reasoning for doing that. A quick overview. All of the magnets worked. Everything came into play. I was so happy with it. I'm sorry you didn't see that right there. The gown will go here. And I'm thinking of putting, uh, oh, there comes bird. Oh, I like this. Ooh, soft. Oh, I just love it. Love it, love it, love it. Yes, thank you. He just keeps me uh, in tune. Yes. He, he keeps me encouraged. I like my little birdie, my little doggy. So they've been a part of my channel and you. Now here are some of the beautiful roses with the satin leaves and pearls off of one of the wedding dress trains actually. It's not even on the dress, it's on the back of the train. Just hundreds of these beautiful rosettes I was able to cut off and put in baggies and store them. And uh, you know, uh, one thing I will suggest if you do this is, you know, when you get your vitamins and uh, in the in your two tubs like of your vitamins, you have that little packet to keep things fresh. Sometimes you get it in your shoes or whatever. Keep those and uh, put one of them inside the material zipped up bags to keep it fresh. Uh, if not, get a little... Uh, piece of material and put baking soda in it and put hot glue and all the way around with your baking uh, soda and uh, put it in the baggie to keep your materials fresh and they don't get mildew or anything that might happen uh, in there. It's just a suggestion and uh, I keep those little packets out of the vitamin jars inside the bag just to keep everything fresh. So here's another idea. I was looking at this thinking, okay, I could design with the rosettes around it, but I found that way too much, way too much. But I do use them, but in an altogether different fashion. Then I was thinking maybe I'd make a, a rabbit head out of it. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yes, but I think you'll like the way I incorporated that. Now this is the footage I lost. I ended up making the exact cover, like I had an, a cover for the album. Uh, I was making my own album front, you know, the spot. Excuse me, you're on satin here. Yes. So I took the roll of vinyl I got at the dollar store. And here I'm using, I'm cutting down the corners. You can see it right there. That's the vinyl. So I made another cover, just like the album from Heartfelt Creation. It was made out of, um, uh, you buy these, you get 50 of these cardboard sheets, so inexpensive. They're for putting in your envelopes when you send a card out, you know. Uh, I will leave a link to that. I get them at my stationery store in a box of 100, two fifties. They come in a 50 thing. Um, Yes, I'll leave that in a link. I'll leave a picture of it in the next video and a link to buying these. There is a name to them. Just a minute, I'm going to check that out for you.
Okay, they're at the stationery store. I'm using my cutter angling down the satin. They're called Edge, uh, a Spicer's brand, envelope inserts, 8.5 by 11. It adds support. It helps prevent bending. 90% uh, recycled material, 100% recycled materials from Spicer's Canada Limited. So it's a Canadian-based uh, product, which I love. Uh, product number 64010. Okay, so they're cardboard inserts. They're just like a cereal box, that consistency. So I used the vinyl I got at the dollar store, the roll of shelf paper, you know, with the backing on it that you can peel off. And I made my own um, extra album cover. Yes, to go over top. So I have the spine that is made now. Don't worry about the wrinkles. Okay, here's the dress. I'm in love with it. I just love the curvature. I love the length. Look at the little pretties in the crinoline, uh, the beaded work, and the back of it with that tablecloth thing like Tyvek. Now here's the spine, okay? I didn't worry about it being perfect as far as the edges because I'm covering all the edges. All of the edges are going to have that uh, dangle with the lace so you're not going to see that so that was not a worry for me so I made this to fold over so actually it's just like a cover here we go I'm not going to give away what I'm going to do but I wanted you to show the difference of the white ribbon we put on there and the uh, cream colored ribbon and this is where it's going all the way around the dangles it's going to look beautiful I really believe it is and uh, that's on the next tutorial then when you put your spine on there and pull it over you are not going to see the edges on the top for many reasons you'll see that when you see the creation at the end so that's the spine I used the vine the vinyl uh, dollar store vinyl that you shelf paper that you tear the back off and it's all sticky I did one for, move it over Carol you're, you're, yes, it's right there, and the bridal gown will be right there, and it'll be flattened out, but wait till you see how I created this. You are going to love it. I think you are. This is, I'm not doing a bragamony. I'm just saying I'm just pleased with the outcome of it. You know, I'm not giving myself any praise or patting myself on the back. I'm just saying that I'm not experienced in albums and uh, I was really happy with uh, doing it with paper and with um, laces and trims and material and satin and all the rest of it and uh, yeah I'm just giving you some ideas here I didn't use this on the back of the spine but it is an idea to take off the buttons off of your wedding gown you can also do this on the back uh, take off the rosettes, find a bridal gown that have rosettes. I mean, to buy a bridal gown for $25 and get hundreds of dollars worth of applique, trim, and rosettes like this off of a gown and repurpose it and repurpose it. It is in a thrift store and, you know, it's either going to sit and get dusty and yellow stain from the sun or else you're going to get it and refurbish it and bring it to life and that's what I do I bring them to life and uh, so there you go uh, just some ideas I want to thank you very much this is a very long tutorial but um, I had so much fun sharing what I've done so far with you I hope you were inspired and I hope you'll stay for the next tutorial that comes up that shows the finale of everything put together and I had fun with you. I loved all of your comments that you leave me uh, getting to know you as friends that stay in my craft room while I'm creating. Isn't that pretty too? Just to add that piece down there. If I was doing this in an off-white, that would be beautiful. Just beautiful. Laces and trims on wedding gowns when you're in your thrift stores, my friends. Uh, consignment shops whatever they're the deal of the century you could pick up some pretty good deals so there you have it my friends enjoy the pictures uh, have yourself a blessed week coming up 
And like always, we are finally finished. Yes, we're going to do that little book. There you have it, okay? Take care, everybody. Have a great week.